There's mystery in the air tonight, along with pumpkins and dogs here on Community. Speaking of air, our first story takes us to Rice University, to its student-run radio station. Set your radio to 91.7 FM for this story. We'll also introduce you to a mystery writer who lives in the memorial area, and we'll take you out of town to a pumpkin patch and to an arena where dogs are transformed into super dogs. So let's begin. KTRU recently was given a power boost which has put this student-run radio station into the public eye. But what is KTRU all about? Set your radio on 91.7 FM now for a running commentary as we embark upon what producers Robert Crow and Megan Ely call their magical journey into the mind. hang out and uh, DJs bum around. I didn't do it. Call Columbo. So this is the main room of focus on the control room. What? I just sit here and look silly or what? Yeah. Very big identity builder in which you say I'm into I'm into hard rock, I'm into heavy metal, I'm into rap, I'm into soul, I'm into some kind of pop, dance, whatever the particular genre. It's a way of saying, this is my allegiance. I've played songs before that I didn't know what they were. And then it's like, oh, I've heard this before. It's really popular. They played this before on 93Q. I'm a DJ here. I do the hardcore show. The Mutant Hardcore Flower Hour. Ah! I wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah, I DJ. Somebody called me up in my last shift and said, do you play any alternative music? I was like, well, I think that's what I've been playing all night. And she said, well, how about the Stone Roses? Do you have any of them? I was like, you know, dear, I don't know how alternative they really are. They just signed a million, million, many million dollar record deal with Jeff and Records. It seems to be part of an identity process um, that it's part of the rebellion, I suppose, and perhaps, perhaps for that very reason, the rebellion factor, that it does have to be different from what came before. It has to be perhaps a little outrageous. Torture! Bondage and domination. I'm ruined. I'm ruined. 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 We just play stuff that even stations won't touch. The music that isn't um, widely known, but should be. We play stuff like this. Yeah. Noise. That one right there with Misty Mountain Top. For that it's was hot. gay bikers on acid and some real wholesome stuff there. If you're listening to KTRU Houston, a song where people can get away with talking through megaphones over the mic just because they feel like it. Speak into a microphone that converts sound to an electrical signal. You can then run it into, in effect, a microphone in reverse called a loudspeaker and convert it back into mechanical waves in the air sound. Excellent. Oh, Noise monger. Hey. I'm assistant promotions director. Assistant music director. Senior assistant co-music. Thing. Uh, director. Thing. I think that Mozart probably like a lot of composers, or maybe most composers we know of as the giants of the past, would love what's going on today because I think they would be fascinated by all the possibilities. He could have been somebody who maybe would have mixed it together, and he might have been a rock star. Hi, I'm Tad Preston. I'm a DJ at 
KTRU. I'm reading the comic book and taping a record of a band that's coming up soon. And DJ and stuff. I do the Friday 7 to 10 a.m. shift. Me, promotions director. All the person with the free tickets. Um, from 1 to 4 in the morning on Tuesdays. I'm a lifeguard, but not here because we don't do much lifeguarding here. There's no pool. If you're talking about college stations, uh, the diversity is so great there. K True here on this campus, but then every college uh, size has its own radio station. Although K True used to have the, the uh, transmitter with about the power of a small hair dryer, uh, and you could barely hear it if you were off the edge. Uh, well, Dr. Chad, uh, you're about right on that. The power of an average uh, small hair dryer in the low power mode is approximately 500 watts. Uh, such as the one I am holding here, and in the uh, high heat mode, approximately 1,250 watts. Uh, so actually, uh, the power of the original facility, uh, which went on the air on or about 1980, uh, was at uh, 650 watts. And experience 91.7 FM for yourself now that its power has been boosted. And we'd love to hear from you. Please call us with your comments and suggestions. Our community number is 749-8338. Did you know that there are many different kinds of pumpkins? Students at TH Rogers know that now. We spent a day in the country with these children who are part of the Vanguard Deaf and Multiply Impaired program at Rogers, a program that integrates these students on a non-academic basis. Producer Jeff Weiss was there for their Halloween adventure. Comments and suggestions. Our guest tonight is Margot Witt, and Margot is the editor of Pet Press and the producer of this story. Welcome to Community, Margot. Now, someone has a dog. How do they know if their dog can be able to do these kinds of tricks? Yeah. Well, they're not exactly just born to it, so you really don't know right at first. Uh, interestingly, the little Sheltie that you see throughout this show, um, my understanding is when he was a puppy, he was afraid to go up the stairs for about a month. So, mm. you, you know, you didn't look at that dog as a puppy and go, this is an agility dog. It's training and, and a lot of time spent with the animal. Well, now, you talk about training, but how in the world do you train a dog to do all of those things? Well, it's really kind of funny because the people that were involved with both the fly ball and the agility sports, it's a social outing for them as well as training their animal. It's quality time with their pet. And it's, you know, maybe once or twice a week they go to train, and that's about it. And then at home, you just keep reinforcing. But you have to, you know, make sure at least that they have that obedience. You know, they come when they're called. Now, are there a lot of different places where people can train their uh, dogs if they're interested in this kind of thing? And then, where do you compete? Well, they can train in obedience at a lot of places. When you start getting to agility or fly ball, it becomes more specialized, more like a club or a group type of setting. But uh, once, you, once you become trained in that, then you, a lot of these people travel all over the country to show in agility because really, obviously, Houston doesn't have a show every day or every weekend. So a lot of them just load the dog up on a plane or the trains, vans, trucks, whatever, and they're going all over the country with them to show. That's how involved they've gotten in the sport. Well, as you said in the story, some of these owners are truly devoted to their pets. <laughs> 